Okay, we're ready for this demo on how to import the VSAs into Virtual Center and do their initial configuration. As you can see, I've already done one for us. If we go ahead and look at the console of this thing, we can see that there is a logon prompt and there's just a simple text-based interface that you can use to configure. That's what we'll be striving for as we import the VSA number two to the recovery site. So to do that, I'll switch over to the vCenter down below, which is vCenter 2. And actually, I'll highlight the ESX server in which I want to get to. So we'll go to File and Deploy OVF Template. This brings us to the wizard for deploying an OVF template. We'll just need to browse to that folder that we've created that contains the downloaded files from, from HP. So to do that, we'll go to the desktop. And in our case, we have a folder called VSA install files. And we have VSA OVF, which will open that. And there's our OVF file. Simply click Open, and then continue on by clicking Next. There's some information about the OVF. We'll go ahead and click Next. And we will accept the end user license agreement. We'll give it a unique name, in this case VSA2, and I'm going to store it with the infrastructure VMs also like to store it within the infrastructure high resource pool and click next. Now you need to select the storage in which the VSA will be contained on. I'm going to use local storage so I'll use ESX2 local and click next. Thick provisioned is fine with me. We'll go ahead and click next and we'll connect it onto the VM network and click Next. You want to make sure that you do not check Power On after deployment. I'll show you in a second, and that's because we'll need to add that virtual disk that we talked about earlier. Once this is done, go ahead and click Finish. And we will wait for the magic of OVF deployment to finish. It's a pretty small OVF, and it's finished, so we'll go ahead and click Close and we'll find our VSA down here below. And we're going to edit its settings so we can add this extra virtual disk that we need. So to do that, we'll go ahead and click Add, select Hard Disk, Create New Virtual Disk, and we need to create it of a substantial size to contain our virtual machines. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and create a 500 gig virtual disk since I have plenty of space, and I'll go ahead and store that with uh, the virtual machine. However, you can store it wherever you have space available. Now, under Virtual Device node, it's important that we change this. This needs to be the first device on a new virtual SCSI adapter. In this case, 1 colon 0. We also need to make sure that you check the independent mode in that this will mean that this virtual disk will never be affected by snapshots done on the virtual machine. So if you ever wanted to, you could snapshot the VSA to protect a certain config without affecting the, the underlying data that's being presented by the VSA. Once that's done, go ahead and click Next and Finish. As you can see, not only is it adding a new hard disk, it'll be adding a new virtual SCSI controller as well. Go ahead and click OK, and we'll wait for this to be created down below. Once this is finished, we can power on the VSA and continue its configuration. OK, now that this virtual machine is uh, booted up fully, we need to go ahead and follow the directions and type in, actually click inside the virtual machine so it has focus, and type in start and hit enter. This will launch the configuration interface for the VSA. Once you're in there, go ahead and click enter one more time. 
and we're going to head and give this an IP address. For ETH0, I'll give it the name of VSA number two. And I want to use the following IP address. And click OK once you're happy with the uh, entries you've put in. Go ahead and click OK. And it will modify the network in the background. All right, it's been done. That will be the address that we'll use to manage this. And we go ahead and click back. You do not need to click configuration management. And under general settings, what you'll want to do is change the password. With that, we're done. All you need to do is give it an IP address and it will be on its way. That's all there is to importing the VSA OVF. We'll catch back with you in part three of this lab setup for array replication. And in that one, we will walk through installing the CMC and using that to configure the VSAs.